Hi, I'm Cindy Villasenor. I'm a garden consultant, garden educator, environmentalist, and low waste advocate. Today, I will be sharing five tips. These tips I'm sharing with you all are there for you to get a start in low waste living. I ended up taking a urban farm internship. I learned about urban farming, zero waste farming. That's where I really started including a lot more low waste living in my life. It became a very big part of what I share online. And one of my friends actually started calling me Set Away Cindy and it stuck. I oftentimes call it low waste living or low waste lifestyle because we all make trash. We also don't see the trash that is made behind the scenes. For example, a big pallet of food is actually wrapped in a lot of plastic at grocery stores and that's the background trash that we don't often notice it's not perfectly zero waste but i am trying my best it all depends on accessibility as well as privilege of time a waste audit is something that will give you a head start on your low waste journey to see and reassess what other steps extra steps you can take towards a low waste living lifestyle. There's a couple ways that you can do it. Do a tally as you throw away things. At the end of the day or the end of the week, look through your trash, take note of all the trash that's in your trash. What's something that I can do so that that is reduced significantly or maybe even make it something that's not in your trash anymore. So another tip would be replacing your throwaway paper towels or napkins with reusable ones. I have one right here that is a linen napkin. I also have a cotton towel right here that I use for cleaning. I wanna say this is a linen blend that we use to dry dishes. This is actually secondhand that someone gifted to me. All of these napkins here, towels, are replacing throwaway paper towels and napkins. If you are worried about sanitation of your reusable paper towels, there are two things that you can do. You can either boil it in hot water in your kitchen, or you can throw them with your load of clothes. We're not making an extra load of just paper towels and wasting extra water. We've been doing this three years now, and we haven't bought any paper towels or napkins ever since. We use and repair whenever possible. In my household, we reuse what we can, even plastic containers. If you grew up in a Latinx household like I did, I always watched my mom reuse butter containers for the salsa. We're always reusing things. I have this jar right here that I actually have dried herbs that I dried myself. Then we have this plastic container that I ended up with and I'm holding some rice in. It's so easy for us to say, okay, well, this is ripped. Let me throw it away. We got to get out of that mindset and always repair what we can. If it has a little rip, sew it up, patch it up and keep reusing that item until you can no longer use it. If something is really damaged, one good thing to do with them is actually turning them into your reusable paper towels or napkins. Cooking more homemade meals if time permits, as well as using whole foods. And what I really mean by whole foods is a whole food like a butternut squash or a potato. I go to the market and I look for items that are package free, for example, potatoes. I look around to see what's available to me personally. And then from there, I'm able to make up and look for recipes that fit for my lifestyle. It's pretty awesome to just grab a vegetable, a protein like beans, and rice and make a bowl out of it. What's really cool about that process is that I tend to avoid a lot of processed food because those usually are packaged. Because of COVID has been a little bit harder, the ways that I've worked around it was I started to get CSA boxes. CSA box is a community supported agriculture farm box, as well as different things that come in reusable containers like a glass jar. There's definitely little ways around it and different things that you can always work on. And my last tip for today is growing your own food if possible, as well as composting, because those go really well together. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. It could be in a container like this where you drill little holes and you grow your own little herbs like cilantro, dill. When you end up growing your own food, you actually are starting to avoid a lot of the packaged stuff at the store. So another thing that goes well with growing your own food is composting. So there's different methods of doing that and it all really depends on your space and when you compost what happens is that 
like this food scraps right here, instead of going to the trash, they're being recycled back into the earth. Instead of going to the landfill, creating methane that goes up into the atmosphere. In my situation, I have a vermicomposting bin. I also have a compost tumbler. Now a compost tumbler is actually a bin that is lifted up from the ground where you just keep turning and turning. And I also am able to drop off my compost at a local community garden. So I actually have those three options and I feel very fortunate for that. Any organic matter that comes into my house, whether it's food scraps, even brown paper bags and things like that, all end up in the compost. We don't end up taking our trash. We probably take it out about once a month. So that's been the really cool thing about composting is that you do significantly reduce the amount of trash that is coming out of your home. Hopefully all of these tips today will help you strive for a low waste lifestyle. Low waste living isn't just about the plastic packaging or how much trash you make. It's also about changing our mindset around material goods and overconsumption of materials that we actually don't need. Our actions and the way we live can affect anything else that lives near us, whether it's an animal, whether it's the mountain range near us. We just have to really remember to connect and remember that we are part of this whole ecosystem that we share together.